Everybody, while I'm on the Carnival Magic, I'm in a quiet room. It's actually called the Escape Bar or something like that. It's just uh, a little tiny room, I think, for private gatherings and small cocktail parties and things like that. Um, it's just outside of the Northern Lights restaurant, um, right as you walk in to see the servers or the uh, hostesses and stuff like that. Um, so that's where I'm at. So welcome everybody and while i was you know waiting i just happened to be looking around and i saw two of these little ducks just sitting on the lead um over there so i found two ducks without much effort at all they were just sitting in here so um what's going on everybody i'll uh i'm gonna try to get the comments up here i don't know if hopefully i can get the comments going yeah so somebody throw something in the comments so I can see if it's popping up or not. But um, while I'm waiting for that, and if I don't see any comments, then I'll know I need to hit something on my phone here. Oh, wait, here we go. Let's see, secret chat, live chat, all messages. Okay, Mandy, I just saw your message there. And Frankie Floyd, what's going on? Okay, I didn't have the messages on. So yeah, Frankie Floyd, I said hi to everybody before that. And, and Sandy and Mandy, um, yeah, the trip is going great so far. No complaints at all. It's been great. Mar, 6230, hello. Ann, what's going on? Chris Kakins, what's going on? James Windings, uh, I am on the Carnival Magic. All right, so I think, I think we're caught up now. Uh, so yeah, it's... Um, it's been good. We I came in, you know, I call my day zero for those of you that, you know, uh, watch my show a lot. You know, my day zero is the day before the cruise. I call it day zero. Mimi Melly, hello. And uh, that was really fun. Um, I met up with Vicky and Rod. They have a place in Pembroke Pines. And then uh, also uh, another couple friends of mine from Pembroke Pines as well um, live you know, Lewis and uh, Monsi, they're actually on the ship with us. So we all met up and we did a, a little mini bar crawl in Pembroke Pines, it was a lot of fun. Janet, hello, nice, thanks for coming along. And that was a lot of fun. So I mean, the, the trip started off great. The one little hiccup, I guess, I, I, I just can't seem to, you know, get on a flight and they just fly somewhere and it's when it's supposed to be or anything like that. So. Uh, both of my flights, I had a connection in Nashville, both flights were delayed. So by the time I actually got to their house on Friday morning, it was like 3 a.m. And then we stayed up, up a couple hours, had a shot or two of Blanton's that they had there ready for that was really cool. And then the next day we did, started off at Hard Rock Casino, Casino. and that place, I mean, it makes, looks like Vegas, that place is enormous, so it was really cool. And then we went up to those five bars and uh, bounced around and had a great time. And then we got on the ship, a little tired, a little hungover, but we got on the ship about noon or so. And it's just been a lot of fun since. Yesterday we were in Amber Cove. And just, again, it was the bar crawl, the first sea day, which was Sunday. And then, you know, then we stayed up kind of late to still using the cheers package and so the uh wake up call to to get you know down to the excursion or whatever we had to be down in the waiting area at 7 30 in the morning so yesterday was rough i i and if hindsight was you know hindsight being 2020 i would have canceled that um and just slept so but it was it was pretty good uh let's see james may 18th will be on the jubilee all right that will be a fun cruise. I, you know, like I said, I just recently was on the Jubilee. It's a beautiful ship. So I'm sure you will like that. All right, so what's going on today? Today we were in San Juan. I have an interview coming out with the cruise director that's on the ship now. I don't know how many of you have cruised with Jake, Jake the cruise director. He's bounced around a bunch of different ships, um, you know, obviously being on the Magic now. He's gonna be doing a European itinerary on the Carnival Legend. I don't know, I forget when he said that started. But uh, but yeah, he's, he's a really nice guy and you know, everybody seems to like him and everything. And I keep seeing him walk around and stuff. So um, 
all reports on him was good. And like I said, the interview went really well. Seems like a really down to earth, you know, fun guy. Last night also, Yoli, what's going on, Yoli? Last night we had Quest. Usually Quest is later in the cruise, but we had Quest and uh, recruited some people from the bar crawl. We probably had about 25 or more people on our team. And it was a lot of fun. Um, again, you're not supposed to, to share everything that, that you did, but I, I will say that, you know, I, I did, they, they, in, the, in, the, in the moment, you, you just, you know, you're just like, oh yeah, somebody run up there. And, and since, yeah, it, it was crazy, it was wild. I really feel like we finished in the top three and they kind of cheated us, but you know, it is what it is. We were just gonna win a cheap bottle of champagne and a ship on a stick, so it's not that big a de deal. Nick is here, almost time for your cruise, yes. And you board the adventure on Friday, very cool. By the way, I do have a couple drinks here. I came prepared. And I know I, I, I talk about that Coach Cruiser, that uh, tequila drink. And Zora, she infused the tequila with something. So it's purple. But this is actually my Coach Cruiser drink. So, yeah, we got that. So I got two drinks here ready to get through the whole hour. I see we got 21 people checked in already. That's awesome. Uh, if you could please remember to hit that like button and we'll generate a few more people to come on over. So that would be great. And, and if anybody has questions, uh, tomorrow we're doing St. Martin. And right now, uh, the next two places are St. Martin, St. Thomas. Those of you that have been there, you know the water. Hey, Will, what's going on? You know the water there is, is just sparkling blue. So hopefully it's sunny and, and we get to see that reflection of the water and that crystal clear blue water. That's also, for those of you that didn't know, uh, Maho Beach. That's where the planes, you see it in the movies and things like that, but you see the planes landing, flying just over the beach. And it seems like they're, you know, I mean, well, they literally are just above your head. And so a lot of people are, you know, going off to do that. So that's what we got going on the next two days. St. Thomas, uh, again, we'll probably just, you know, do a beach. James is asking if I like the magic. I do. I do. I, I, let me tell you, the crew here, you know, all of the leadership uh, personnel, we did, James and I, he's actually sitting by me over here, we, uh, he, him and I are both diamond, diamond event, Janet, we're going on an adventure, April 26th, okay, have a great cruise, get better weather than we did. Yeah, well, the, the, the weather getting on the uh, ship was rainy and a little yucky or whatever, but, and then yesterday when we did uh, Amber Cove, it started off a little rainy, but when we were um, actually on the catamaran, it was nice and sunny and stuff. As a matter of fact, I got a little bit burnt. So yeah, we the, the weather's been cooperating. Today, people were complaining about it being so hot, but it, since, you know, I stayed on the ship and, you know, did a, a ship tour that I'll, I'll you know, put out there in a week or so, um, and the interview with Jake. You know, I didn't, I wasn't too bothered by it. Michael, what's going on? Justin is saying, have you heard that Carnival's having a fifth? I did, I did. So many of our cruise content friends posted that. I know Andrew from Funnel Heads, I think I saw it on Carnival Cruise Addicts or Cruise Life TV. Um, they had posted it also. Uh, so yeah, I was able to see that. So yeah, unbelievable, fifth XL class ship. Uh, the one thing I was sell class ships when the Vista class came out, it was only three ships. So I'm wondering, are they going to kind of get away with a smaller ship? Well, not small. I mean, none of these ships are small. Like this magic still holds like 3,000 people or whatever uh, customers. So it was very hot in Belize earlier this month. Okay, yeah. And it's like I said, I, I don't know what the temperature is supposed to be like tomorrow. But I'd rather it be hot than cold, right? Going on the Jubilee on Saturday and Dream on April 5th. All right, Nancy, sounds good. Got two, two just right around the corner there. So very good. And, um, oh, I was getting back to the crew. So we went to the Diamond event. Captain came over, you know, said hello, took pictures with us. Uh, you know, the hotel director came over. She was wonderful. The HR person came over. She was great. Uh, the beverage manor came by, made sure, 
we and the you know had the entertainment director came by everybody came by you know so like I, I've, I've talked to so many of the the brass i guess you could say here on the carnival magic and they've all been really really cool really helpful making sure that everything's going smooth and for the most part you know it has been piano bar has been hopping uh, gone to that the last couple nights late and i mean it is packed and the guy in there i, I wish i'd have gotten his name but you know people are really enjoying him not quite as good as my guy keith that i had on the celebration and thanksgiving but he's 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 close you know he's he's really good too so uh he's definitely been doing a good job and and making people happy so he is a good piano bar player for sure the z show is here what is going on z and i just got a notification that, that island time and they must be having an unplanned live or something or maybe they're just trying to work their lives in here periodically because uh yeah i just saw that so um so don't everybody leave <laughs> no i'm just kidding yeah, if you wanted to, you certainly could, obviously. But, um, yeah, so that's that's what's been going on. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other questions regarding the Carnival Magic. James are in the Northern or SIU, the Light Restaurant. I am just outside the Northern Lights Restaurant. It's this little tiny room called the Escape Room. You'd probably walk right past it and not even see it if you weren't looking. I have not cruised with Ben. No, I have not. Frankie, yeah, is just saying hi to Z. And pardon me while I take a sip of my beverage here. Cruise Live TV, Greg and Michelle. I, I just mentioned you guys a little bit. I think I saw you post about the, the fifth XL class ship um, along with Andrew. And I, I think Carnival Cruise Addicts did as well. I did post a couple videos, by the way. Just a couple shorts. So for those of you that were looking for cruise content coming out from me, the full-on videos uh, I have not released yet. I got to get on the ball, and, and maybe I'll do that tomorrow while we're sitting on the beach or something and bring my AirPods and my editing stuff and get to, get to work on you know, putting cruise day together and maybe the first day or two, maybe the bar crawl, something like that. Uh, but I did do a make a short yesterday. And I did a short from the bar crawl and uh, where we did the suck my beer competition. And that one's been viewed, I don't know, closing in on 2,000 times now or something in, in less than 24 hours. And then, uh, oh, thank you, Greg and Michelle. Uh, and it was funny. It really is funny. The, the best reaction, if you haven't seen that short yet, go check it out. So what the suck my beer competition is is if you see the thumbnail of these bar crawls I do when I do this contest, it looks like a very provocative sexual position. Um, and it's not. <laughs> what it is, is it's you, you put a beer in a pint glass with a straw in it. And you put that, that beer, you know, between your partner's legs. And then the other partner has to suck the beer through the straw so it can create an image that makes it look like like i said some sexual position potentially so when you see the thumbnail that's kind of the image that it, that it gives so i mentioned to the ladies participating uh and to the partners that the partners had to have their hand on the uh beer suckers head uh you know while they were sucking the beer which you know only intensifies that that look right and so all the ladies when i said that they just they just start bust out laughing or whatever and they're like oh my god you know so if you watch that one minute short it's kind of funny so yeah that's uh that's pretty much it and oh well thank you greg and michelle um and then like i said the alchemy bar so those two shorts but more to come i assure you and another drink of this one is a watermelon martini. I have my little blinking light here, and that's uh, if you were wondering why it's a little disco show in a glass. And I do these these little blinking lights. People always ask me, where do you get those lights? You know, you can get them on Amazon. I've seen them on Timu too. Uh, they're you know the price can vary a couple bucks or whatever. But yes, Yoli, it is James. 
James is behind me. Um, and you can get these for like 13 bucks on Amazon or Timu, and, and sometimes you can get them for a buck or two cheaper. So there you go, and I'm gonna take a sip. All right. So speaking of cruises, I know a number of people. Nancy, okay, so good question. She says, what drink do you recommend at the Alchemy Bar? There are so many good drinks. Really, I think that you know the best thing you can do at Alchemy is let them know uh, yeah, Yoli says, hi, James. <laughs> um, the best thing to do if you go to the Alchemy Bar is, is go with whatever your favorite liquor is. If you're a vodka person, if you're a tequila person, if you're a bourbon person or something like that. And, you know, they have a pretty extensive menu as it is. So you can go through and find these drinks that, that have the, the liquors in them that you like. But if there's nothing in there that strikes your fancy or whatever, you can go to the alchemist and say, hey, you know, can I get something made with whatever that, that has a little this, a little that. Daryl, what's going on, Daryl? From Dean's, Dean's on Deck. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the party. Uh, yeah, and, and they'll do something for you. Like yesterday, for example, I had a little twisted up stomach. And so I went to Zora and I said, hey, do you got a drink? You know, because my stomach's a little unsettled or whatever. She's like, yeah, I got ginger. You know, so she made me this ginger drink. And the closest thing I can compare it to, if you've been to the Alchemy Bar and you've had the basil drop, the basil drop is a very light, refreshing uh, drink. And anyway, um, it's, it's kind of like that, but obviously with a little more ginger kick to it or whatever and it, it I mean it did the trick my stomach felt better and the drink tasted great so yeah there's that so yeah um but drinks that I like I always get the fiery tropical or you know I call it the coach cruiser now because it's not on the menu and that is a tequila drink it's got two ounces Patron one ounce triple sec one ounce lime juice and a one ounce spicy mango syrup so you give them that, that recipe and they'll know exactly what to do and they'll whip you up that drink. And that's a martini, not on the rocks. Uh, the Cucumber Sunrise, if you've never been to the Alchemy Bar, that's probably their signature drink, their most famous drink. So I would recommend that one, try that out. It's a refreshing drink and uh, very flavorful. And you know some people just love that. Uh, I've heard the Martini Seduction, a lot of people like. The Purple Sunset, you know, I've seen several people really like that one. Watermelon Martini, you can usually get, I will get the Watermelon Martini a lot if they have fresh watermelon at the Alchemy Bar. If they don't have fresh watermelon at the Alchemy Bar, then I go down to the Steakhouse because the Steakhouse always has watermelon because that's one of their signature drinks. So that's what we have going here. And speaking of my fiery tropical now the fiery tropical looks yellow red frog pub and do they have happy hour oh you know what uh greg and michelle we got here to the red frog and yes i was there i don't remember them doing a bunch of pictures i didn't see people ordering pictures and i was there from 1 to 2 30 because i was passing out shirts so i didn't confirm whether they were doing it or not but Usually when they have that happy hour and the half price pictures, you'll see a bunch of people ordering pictures. And I didn't really see that. So I kind of want to say no. But here's my fiery tropical that looks purple. Normally it would look yellow. But we're going to give it a try and see if it tastes the way it usually does. It's pretty good. It's a little different because uh, tequila is infused with something. But it's still really good. All right. Uh, let's see. America Rocks is going on today. That's a really good show. Uh, they do have two showings. Those of you, again, new to cruising, typically any of the Broadway shows, they might have one, say, so start at 7.30 and another one start at 9.30. That way, if your dinner's a little earlier, you know, you can maybe catch the first show. If it's a little bit later, you can usually catch the second show. And, and that way, you have the opportunity to do both, and then one show is not too crowded. The comedy, like always, has been very crowded. I have not seen a session yet. It's been too busy doing other things. 
but uh, it's you know it's popular, and I you know I've heard good things. Uh, there's an older lady, I forget her name. I know Jeff Shaw was one of the comedians. I don't think they've switched out yet. And then I, uh, I wish I'd have remembered the the lady's name, but I heard she was really funny, and she was older. I'd heard that, and you know she was telling some pretty raunchy jokes and stuff like that, which you know always well not always makes people laugh, but a lot of times it will. And I think the fact that she's a little older makes it even a little more funny. So there's that. Yeah, and then my cruises, um, I was about to mention this, June 8th will be my next cruise after this back here in Miami on the Carnival Horizon this time, which is definitely one of my favorite ships. And then right after that, like two, three days later, I will be jumping on the Carnival Venezia. And that will be my first time on the Carnival Venezia. Looking forward to that little different twist, you know, that Italian themed ship. And yeah, that'll be, that'll be cool. So pardon me while I have another sip of my watermelon martini. And itineraries. Speaking, uh, I was speaking with Jake today. June, yes, will June 8th, I will be on the Carnival Horizon. So yeah, I got a couple months to wait after this cruise. So I got to savor every day of this one. And so far, so good. It's been wonderful, like I said. And uh, yeah. right after this, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll go find some more fun things to do. Maybe we'll see that late show of America Rocks. The Rock and Glow Party, for those of you that have never been to that, that is going on tonight. That's when they, you know, play a lot of, you know, 80s rock and pop music and, uh, you know, it, it, it depends on the cruise director. They change it up a little bit. Oh, the name of the comedian. You know what, Will? I, I don't know. I really don't. Could you look up the comedians that are playing here? Sure. Yeah, James is going to check on it for you. So maybe I'll... One's, you know, I think one is Jeff Shaw, like I said, and, and, and James is going to look up who the comedians are right now. So we'll get an answer for you. See, we, we have researchers working on it as we speak. This watermelon martini is really tasty. Sorry for <laughs> drinking it so much. Uh, where are we at here? Somebody th throw some questions at me. I, I, I didn't come very well prepared, as you can see. I don't have a whole list of notes. I did, like I said, I had that interview with Jake today, the cruise director, and really nice guy. Look for that interview anytime. Piano Bar, Greg and Michelle, much better. Uh, I love the pineapple jalapeno martini. Is that the spicy chipotle? I'm, I'm wondering if it's that same martini or did they, you add a little twist to yours? Cause yeah, I don't, I don't remember the spicy chipotle having jalapeno, but if it does, and you added a little twist to make it a little bit different. So, so yeah, I asked Jake a lot of different questions. I mean, he's worked with a number of cruise directors. One funny story that he shared, one of the questions I'll, I'll give you, it's cruising Karen, yum, sounds good. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. That would be worth a try. And he said his most embarrassing moment happened just last week or a couple weeks ago. He was doing, you know, around St. Patrick's Day. I guess he had a big St. Patrick's Day hat on. And they were doing the wobble or something on, you know, the Lido deck. And he fell in the pool. He said he, he, he's blaming it on the hat, saying it threw off his equilibrium or something like that. He fell in the pool with the microphone, with the iPhone, with, he, thankfully his iPhone was still working, but he had some other technology that with him that uh, has ceased to work again. And he said that that was really embarrassed. And he said that a lot of people thought that it was staged, that he was supposed to fall in the pool and you know people laughed or whatever, but he said that was really embarrassing. So, um, T-Boat on the go says, can't wait to see the interview with Jake. I asked about him a couple weeks ago, and you said you'd give me a scoop on him. Yeah, and you are going to get that scoop, and you're going to get the interview. And, and not only that, T-Boat, but I uh, talked with Jake. I'm going to do some behind-the-scenes stuff with him also, so I'll, I'll follow him around a couple of the events starting Friday, and then I'll probably see him, you know, two, three events on Friday, and then I'll connect that to two, three more events 
on Saturday, and then I'll just make one big video of that, some behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah, again, but I, I think you'll like him. You know, he's a, he's a real nice guy. So, um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Frankie says, have you had the Mongolian walk? As a matter of fact, Frankie, just today, just today after the uh, ship tour, James was walking around with me while I was doing it. And once we finished, you know, we had worked up an appetite because you do a ship tour, you know, you're, you're walking through every deck back and forth, up and down. And, and uh, so, yeah, we were both hungry and hadn't done the Mongolian walk yet. And T-boat on the go 19 days in August, yeah. That's going to be a long cruise, so he better be good. Yeah, Mongolian Walk was, what's the name? Okay, James is fine, but actually the names are new, so I don't think. Um, what we'll do, though, here, Punchline or Comet, yeah, these are new people. Dominic, Leonelli, and Derek Eason, so what we got to do is we got to go back to yesterday. Oh, they don't have it loaded up. Okay, so yes, uh, I think somebody said the name. It was Julie Scoggins. So we have new comedians today. So those those names I just said to you, those are the new comedians. Jeff Shaw him and Julie Scoggins. So I don't know how many of you have seen Julie or Jeff, but they were the comedians. And then, like I said, we have those two new comedians coming in. And again, that's something for newer cruisers. If you didn't know. Typically with the comedians, you know, especially if you're on like a seven day cruise, so you're not hearing the same material over and over, they will uh, have the comedians on for, you know, three to four days, and then they will leave and two new comedians will come in and that way you get to see new material, new stand up comedy, and that's how that works. So, yeah, cheers. And you all, I think I'm going to do a 30-minute show today. Will is saying she was on the Freedom in December. And Will should know because Will goes on about a cruise every other week. So, yeah. Uh, Carnival Cruise Addicts. And I, you know what? When I was about to go live, I saw you on with Tinkerbell. And uh, I was going to try to pop in there and say hi, but I was still setting up and everything. Well... A CCA, Carnival Cruise Addicts. This was, what's left of it, you can still see the, the watermelon chunks there. This was a watermelon martini. And this one, although it looks nothing like it, it looks like the purple sunset a little bit, but it's just because it's infused with something that makes it look purple. But this is my fiery tropical. Um, and how about those other two comedians? So all of you that are watching right now, if you could tell us if those two... Uh, two comedians recognizes those two names if they're any good little but they're just up on, i found and i gotta say the duck hiders aren't working as hard as they used to because the two normal sized ducks that i found were like one was in between a railing and then one was just sitting i don't know where it was just i forget but it was pretty easy to spot i'll say that and you know i i just turned around and find a kid or something like that and you know give them the duck but we jumped up so see all of you hitting the, the like button went on my screen anyway it went from about 26 to 35 so the 10 of you that just jumped on welcome and because you did you know i'll stay on a little bit longer here i was gonna cut this live a little bit short but we can talk about more stuff so yeah if you have questions about the magic um you know, I mean, it's a lot different. I've been going on the XL class ships, but the great thing about these size ships is, you know, and, and Jake mentioned that in, in the interview I did with him today, is you kind of get to know everybody. You know, from a cruise director perspective, you kind of start to see the same people. And even as just a cruiser, you know, because I do, Yes, Frankie's saying they need to hit that like button. So, yeah, please, if you haven't already hit that like button, please do. And, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate you. So, uh, what was I about to say? Oh, yeah. So, on the smaller ships, you know, you're going to see the, the same people kind of walking past you in the hallways and things like that. Um, you know, I hosted the bar crawl, and that, that's another thing. Going to do the Quest. Yeah. Cruise Life TV, I, we did the Quest last night. You missed it. You must have come on just after I, I was talking about it. But... You know, you, you, you get to know more people. When you're on a ship with 6,500 people, 
honestly, there might be some people that you never even see. Together we travel. Welcome, welcome. Look at that. Carnival Cruise Addicts, next drink on us. And look, I got a full one right here, Carnival Cruise Addicts. And we'll start drinking that one just for you. Thank you for that. And remind me, when I get home next week, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put that one down, you know, for the drawing. So, cheers to you, Liz and Chris. What are your thoughts on Carnival building a fifth XL class ship? Daryl from Dean's on Deck. That's a great question because I kind of wanted to get to that anyway. Sandy says, make sure Zoe gets a treat. Oh, okay, let me talk one at a time, but then remind me about Zoe because she's been living the life. She's, I think she's having a better vacation than me. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we'll have to get you another one. I'm running out of the pink shirts. Those are popular color. So the fifth XL class ship, my thoughts on that are, well... I think, I think I, I kind of like, I've told you this in the past, those of you that have watched that the Carnival Horizon is probably my favorite ship. It's got just the right amount of amenities and you know, it's not too small. So if you can give me a, a ship that's about that size, if it has an area like the Havana area that you know, isn't crazy expensive, um, that is a really, really cool thing too. But, you know, like guys picking an anchor bar, I really like, you know, obviously all the ships have the alchemy bar. I think Shaq's big chicken, I would like to see Shaq's big chicken put on all of the cruise ships, the same way they put guys burgers on all of the cruise ships. I think that would be a good thing for them to do. Jake mentioned that today that he thinks that's the best thing that's ever come on, uh, you know, carnival ships is the Shaq's big chicken. And, I'll tell you what, as far as food, new food things, um, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll take the free uh, sandwiches at, at Shaq's way before I'll go spend money at Emerald's. Nothing against Emerald. They have a lot of good items on that menu, but you're paying for that where the Shaq's chicken and the guy's burgers and stuff is free. Justin says, well, what will the name of the fifth XL class ship? You know what? I mean, I think to figure out the names, there's a fourth XL class and a fifth XL class, right? To figure out the names of the ship, go back and look at the timeline of ships that have been released. If they continue to follow the theme, they're going to rename it one of the ships that, you know, started off first with Carnival. So you see, you know, they picked out the Jubilee. So that name's gone, obviously, the Celebration, the Mardi Gras. And this is an XL class ship too, so I, I suspect the next two XL class ships will be names from the past, names from previous ships that Carnival had when they first, you know, started being Carnival, right? So go back there and look at those names. But it looks like the internet just wants to get screwy all of a sudden. Um, it's, it's asked me to reconnect several times. Frankie is saying my first carnival was the Carnival. Yeah, and they named that a restaurant. So, yeah, maybe they'll do something like that, Frankie. I mean, there's the Horizons restaurant and the Carnival Vista or something like that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think that. And then somebody was asking about Zoe, okay? Zoe, for those of you who don't know, is is my dog, and she usually sits beside me on the lives. Obviously, she can't do that when I'm on a cruise. Oh, Destiny. Carnival Cruise Addicts wants Destiny to come back. Well, maybe that'll be the one. So Zoe stayed with her biological father. So one of my former students, you know, we got Zoe from them. And so they have the father. And the they live in an apartment building there in Chicago. And their neighbors have Zoe's mother. But this former student of mine, he also kept two of the puppies. So Zoe got to be with two of her sisters, her father, and saw her, you know, biological mother. So they, they got to play and everything. And then, you know, they've, they've just been spoiling Zoe. Uh, he sent me a video where, you know, all the dogs got a steak. And, uh, and then, you know, Anita spoiled them with a bunch of chicken. Uh, and cut it all up in little pieces and put it in bags and stuff like that and sent that with Zoe. So 
Zoe's living the life. She has definitely been getting treats. So I think Sandy, I think it was you that said, make sure Zoe's getting a treat. I told Anita, I said, uh, she's not going to want to come home. She, you're going to go there to pick her up and there, she's going to run and hide under the bed or something. <laughs> Because uh, she's she's living the life now. She, like I said, she might be having a better vacation than I than I am, and I'm having a really good one. So, uh, yeah, she's happy. She's a happy dog right now. So it's all good. All right. So I was saying, you know, the the connection fee that you know I'm starting to see the little spinning circle, and I've been disconnected. Thank you for the 21 of you I see that are holding on and and fought through and waited for the connection to reestablish itself. Um, and I'll wait just another minute here for any other questions anybody might want to throw up there but if there are none i might let you go just a little bit early um, i'm at 36 30 roughly here so let's take this to at least 40 minutes and again if i don't get any other questions or something we'll cut this about 20 minutes early just because the the internet's acting a little screwy and you know i don't want to get cut off and lose you and make you wait for me or anything like that so so again uh, the this particular cruise for those of you who just joined tomorrow we went Amber Cove was the first one that's Dominican Republic we did a catamaran there today we stayed on the ship in San Juan because um, I did had to do a ship tour and I interviewed Jake the cruise director tomorrow and the next day uh, we have St Martin and then St Thomas those are going to be beach days because the beaches in St Martin and St Thomas are beautiful. So that's easy. When the beaches are beautiful, you know, get a couple chairs, get an umbrella, get some drinks, and you're golden. Just enjoy the water, enjoy the beauty, and have a good time. I did have some thoughts of going to Maho Beach. Tim is asking if they've done the Love and Marriage show. I don't think so yet, Tim. I don't think so. Um, I know they haven't done the White Night tonight. Like I said, is the Rock and Glow, uh, and they're they're having Music City. So uh, love and marriage might be tomorrow. I want to say usually it's in the middle of the cruise and tomorrow will kind of be that middle day. So uh, I, I want to say tomorrow, Tim, that would be my guess. Uh, oh, Carnival Cruise Addicts. Yeah, how did I forget that? Thank you for mentioning it. Carnival Cruise Addicts, congrats on your jackpot. I, for the, I've never won a jackpot. On, I don't play a lot of slot machines. But I decided to play them a little bit more because it's the easiest way to earn points to get, you know, better cruise rates and stuff like that. And I don't get free cruises. A lot of people ask me if Carnival pays for them and things like that. All right, Will, thanks. Um, they don't. But if you play in the casino, you can, you know, usually get some really good rates. I know Carnival Cruise Addicts, they're they're casino players and they get some really great rates, you know, where they're only having to pay a hundred dollars per person and get some, uh, onboard credit, things like that. And there's some questions coming in here. So I ended up, and this was after I had lost a lot of money playing blackjack, but I ended up hitting a $2,000 jackpot for those of you that don't know. And it was on the wheel of fortune game and yeah and that brought me obviously all the way back so i haven't played much since i won that and uh, hold on a second i lost the questions okay here we go okay we had a couple questions and i'm on my phone here now so t-boat on the go will be in saint martin next year make sure you give us a good review of the beach you go to okay I'll do that, T-Bode. We might do the one that's close to port, but if we venture out, I'll definitely let you know. Yoli says, did you enter the center of the ship where there's the main lobby bar? It gives you that wow feeling. You know what, Yoli? I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because we didn't. They had two ramps that you could enter through, and one put us in on, like, the second floor or something, which was weird. You know, I've always walked in on the cruise, and I would say... In most cases, I would say like 95% of the time, you walk in through the main lobby. But for whatever reason, they, we picked the wrong ramp and we ended up like on the second floor and had to drag our bag up or whatever. I mean, I guess that's the way they have to do it, but I would prefer to just, I, you know, I, I guess they're just trying to get people on quicker, whatever the case may be. But yeah, I would definitely prefer to go through the main lobby and, and we didn't this time. I mean, it's not that big a deal but that would be my preference. So good question there. Let me see if I can see any more questions. 
Frankie says we get good casino deals and yeah. So for, the, for those of you that um, maybe you're not big gamblers, one strategy that I've heard multiple people say is once you get to a thousand casino points, you kind of get put in the system. Now, I don't know that to be a fact, but you're gonna be more likely to be recognized as a gambler and more likely to be put on that list for better casino rates and stuff like that. But be forewarned, it is gambling. So you can lose a lot of money really fast. You know, I'm, I'm with some people and they've not had any luck. And, you know, they said, you know, I lost this many hundred dollars in like 10 minutes or something like that. It can go really fast. So, you know, on your way to getting a thousand points, you know, I mean, hopefully you don't want to lose too much money and you won't, hopefully you win, but just, just keep in mind that if you're doing it for that reason, think of it as more like an investment so you get cheaper cruise rates. And then when you get those cheaper cruise rates, it kind of offsets some of the gambling losings or gambling, gambling losses, losings, there's a gambling losses that you might have. So, all right, well, we went past that 41 minutes. Uh, the, the connection is kind of hanging on here. So I guess I can stay. And Carnival Cruise Addict's drink that they got me here is still pretty full. So let me take a sip of that and we'll keep, keep you know, pushing through here. All right, Carnival Cruise Addict says stay. So I'm gonna stay and I still got another sip here of this watermelon martini. All right. One drink down and one to go. All right, so where is, I want to ask some questions of you all now. What is your favorite port? What is your favorite port? The reason I ask that is St. Martin and St. Thomas, I feel like has some of the most beautiful beaches um, of all the Caribbean. I, th I think those two particular ports, and that's why I always enjoy going into St. Martin or St. Thomas. So my favorite port overall is probably Cozumel for a variety of reasons. Carnival Cruise Act to St. Thomas and St. Martin. So there we go. Great minds, right? So they just picked two. Yoli says Grand Turk. That is another great one. Beautiful water. The beach is right there. That is a great choice. Uh, T-boat on the go. Bon Air, beautiful. Get a golf cart, drive around there, and uh, yeah, that's a little bit of heaven. Uh, Cruise Life TV says all for different reasons. Cruise Life TV, that was a very political answer you gave. Uh, never been on the, the list. Oh, Grand Turk for us. Tim says Grand Turk. Cozumel, Daryl, yeah, and I, I really love Cozumel as well. St. Thomas, like I said, St. Martin, Grand Turk, all favorites. Bon Air. As somebody just mentioned, so you all are pit, picking some real winners for sure. All right, anybody else want to throw their favorite cruise port up? All right, so I mentioned this earlier. If I have to pick a ship and a room, I, I, if we combine the room with the ship, if you get me to the Havana area on the Carnival Horizon, then that will be my favorite ship. If it's just a regular room, then there's some other ships that can compete. But if I get to, in the Havana area, Cozumel and Bimini, you know what, Frankie, I've not been to Bimini yet. I've not been to Bimini and I've not been to Bermuda. So the B islands are escaping me, at least those two. I have been to Bonaire, but at the Bimini and um, Baha uh, Bermuda, I have not been to. So. Tim says we haven't been to St. Thomas or St. Martin. And Tim, you got two more cruises coming up as one of those itineraries hopefully has it. If not, see if you can find an itinerary that does. If not, you might have to make a special point to, uh, to do that. And somebody, you know, T-Boat on the go, I think it was, says Bonaire hands down. Sandy says, sorry, can't choose one. I feel you on that. Belize can be really pretty too. Belize has some beautiful offerings. And when you go into Belize's port, it doesn't look like it does. But, you know, if you go off on an excursion and you get out into the water, there is some beautiful crystal clear blue water. 
um, what is the name? K Cocker. K Cocker is just a water taxi, a ride away, maybe a 30 minute water taxi ride or whatever. Uh, uh, that's a little, uh, okay, yeah, that's not good. Um, so what is it? Shark Ray Alley is a very cool spot to be. Uh, Golf's K is another cool spot. This is a class of Atlanta area, otherwise the dream. Yep, I, I'm with you. Walking around San Juan was fun. Not much in excursions. Yeah, um, San Juan, just to walk around is a great city. T-boat on the go. Yeah, okay. I missed that last part. I'm seeing these comments on my computer. It stays up on the screen, but when it's on my phone, I got to read them really quick. Otherwise, they just kind of fade away and I have to look look for them again. So, all right, everybody. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, I, I'm i glad the connection kind of reestablished itself. We lost about 10 people when it froze on me there. So again, thank you all for staying on. There are 22 of you in here and we have 22 likes. The likelihood that all 22 of you hit the likes, uh, probably not. There's probably a couple of you that, that haven't hit the likes. So if you could do that before we go. Uh, T, uh, Tim says we'll go in January on the Vista. Okay, great. And again, hopefully I, I don't. I might have missed one of your comments there, Tim. Hopefully, it's one of those um, ports that you have not been to yet. All right, so I will let you all go. Again, thank you for. I, I know I posted this live really late. It was only like three, four hours before we went live, but I was like, hey, it's Tuesday, and I haven't really gone live, so I got to make sure I get get on here and say hello to everybody. So, thank you all for joining, and CCA, thank you. I'm gonna finish the rest of my drink here and we're going to go out and we're going to have a little bit of fun on the carnival magic cruise life tv says uh the best thank you so much for that enjoy your time on the magic hope to see it. yeah I, I lost and now ah, they're disappearing on me have a great rest of my trip thank you for that t-boat on the go and yeah good night everybody michael allen have a great night as well all right frankie floyd you too and we'll see you all and we are gonna make this a wrap. All right, take care, everybody.